Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Remastered TFOS. This is episode two, where I take stories that I've previously done and do a new spin on it, hopefully doing a better job. Anyways, this story is called uh, Nukes Are For Wussies, written by Plusium. As I said, nukes are for wussies. The grizzled captain grinned and cycled the tobacco gum in his mouth. I still don't understand. What are we doing? A young, naive ensign, bless his poor heart, asked for the seemingly millionth time. <laughs> don't worry about it, son. We're just doing a delivery of our feds. The payment figure flashed in his mind, and a rush of endorphins filled his bloodstream. The brass sure paid well. Ten million for a week-long run, all expenses paid. Just a delivery, uh, got it. Satisfied, the young man stood and left the cabin. He headed for his assigned station, having delivered his package and bothered the captain excessively while doing so. He passes a 32-meter shipping package. He stopped and stared at it for the tenth time at delivery, just wondering what the hell someone needed that was that big and wasn't a vehicle. Maybe it was just raw material. And what did it have to do with nukes? Nukes are for wussies. That's the only answer he'd gotten from the old man. He shook his head. Best not to worry. The man sitting at his desk groaned. Another shipment of conflicting goods. Ever since the great ban on most of humanity's imports, what should have been a standard shipment of mining equipment turned into a week-long grind. A great war against the wall of paperwork. One, no man has ever won. Thank God for alien AI and aliens. Ironic how one turns to their ruiners for respite they provide. But enough daydreaming. Work, damn it. The man looked at the meter tall stack of paperwork. Perhaps a little more daydreaming was due. Who even used paper in this economy? The captain chuckled as he pulled into the alien port, waving off any customs officers with judicious use of wads of absurd monetary value. It was good to have all expenses covered on such a job. Usually, such a blessing would warrant company-sponsored mental relief purchases of exotic alcohols. But this was meant to be a fast mission. People promote silicon lubricants for personal use, but if bureaucracy was given any sign, dollar bills would be a far better alternative. All secondary cargo was swiftly unloaded, the workers gleefully disregarding health and safety for the prospect of double pay. Now, for the main cargo. They were swiftly released from the dock, and they quickly peeled off into the upper stratosphere, heading for the lunar colony. Minutes later, and they hit the terraformed atmosphere, held glowing red as a bulbous storage compartment disagreed immensely with a high-speed wind. All right, crew, we're making a fast run here. Get ready to drop the cargo on my word, the intercom crackled out. The more experienced crew smiled, an evil smile and set to work, preparing for the obscenely large package for delivery. Ever since the import restrictions had set into place, their income had been more than halved. So, what should I do? The captain damn near leapt out of his chair. He quickly stood, facing the young man from earlier. Jesus Christ, man! Don't sneak up on me like that! The ensign stared at him uncomprehendingly. You know what? Uh, fine, sit there! The captain energetically pointed to the co-pilot seat. I will tell you a story. Am I getting promoted, sir? The captain looked at the young man warily, as if suspecting a trick, before his expression morphed into disbelief. Who I... No, never mind. No promotion. Just sit there. Shut up. The man stood still. What are you waiting for? Go! The man took a hint and awkwardly clunked into the seat. Sir, I... Shush! I'm speaking! The captain turned back to the display screens and quickly corrected the slight deviations the primitive computer had made. Damn restrictions. Basically, you know about the production limits imposed on humans. Somewhat. Good enough. Basically, we can't make anything weapon-related. However, thanks to our lawyers being literal slime creatures, we managed to whine enough to get some concessions. Now, we're only banned direct weapons. No bullets, nukes, or neurotoxins. But debt called for lumberjacks, gases for industrial processes, sure, just with the massive loads of paperwork. Sir, what does- Hush! The captain turned his agent face away from the screens to the man to lift a finger. 
to his lips before he returned his attention to the readouts. The colony was barely a minute away. Basically, the government isn't happy with that. It's been that way for a century or two, and frankly, they're sick and tired of it. They've got weapons now. They have soldiers and alien tech. The only problem is, they would still lose. What's this got to do with us? Well, uh, there's no way you can attack the settlement stealthily. You'd be caught and blown out of the sky immediately. A frontal assault wouldn't work either. Their defenses are too good. So, how do you attack something that's unattackable? I have no idea. The captain grins a slight grin. Ship 4349, please reduce your velocity. The intercom crackled. Sure, the captain responded and cranked down the accelerator, jolting the cargo hauler forward. Simple, you don't use weapons well. Weapons. No way you can get a nuke through customs without being shut down. Sides, nukes are for wussies. Ship 4349, please immediately cease your movements and prepare for boarding. Failure to comply will be met with force. The captain inched the accelerator forward, and the ship passed over the colony. The hauler jutted as a 32-meter cube was jettisoned before it shot forward, significantly lighter. Anti-air fire exploded around the cargo, distracted by the chaff destroyed. Go feck yourself! He turned off the microphone and turned to the ensign. Tell me, how powerful is a nuke? It depends, sir. The one on Hiroshima was approximately 15 kilotons of TNT. Tell me, what do you think we were doing with 50,000 tons of miners' equipment? No idea, sir. Jesus, you're thick. Just look. The man called up a display of rear cameras. A massive fireball rose into the air, the shockwave visibly spreading out. Wreckage barely visible in the mushroom cloud. The anti-air fire chasing the ship ended moments later as the shells stopped being fired for obvious reasons. The captain grinned. Ten mil to screw over the Xenos and enjoy myself. Sir, how do you attack something unattackable? The captain chuckled. <laughs> you use a Trojan horse. Can't stop paperwork. Besides, nukes are for wussies who can't get enough TNT. Silence reigned in the captain. Nah, I don't understand, sir. Oh, for vexed sake. End of story. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members. Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.